Hi everybody, good day to you. Right here we have a blue and color 2014 Hyundai. And the customer states that the check engine light is on. So I'm going to use, a lot, uh, use my scan tool to determine what the issue is here. And the customer states that the service engine soon warning illuminator is illuminated. It starts, that's cool. And uh, yes, it appears. Ah, the seat's moving forward and crushing me. Yeah, check engine light is on. And I've, I fixed the seat issue. Okay, let's uh, swing this thing into the shop and uh, see what's going on with that service engine light. And this is great. Due to my toolbox cleaning efforts the other day, I know exactly where all my stuff is now. Yay! On the subject of toolboxes, I made a, a video. It's over on my second channel of me performing a like five or six year purge on the contents of my tool toolbox. So if you'd like to see that video, and see how I took it from trash to treasure, I will leave a link down in the description that will take you there. Okay, let's see what's in the engine menu. Uh, trouble codes. EVEP system leak, large leak detected, history code. History code, huh? Hmm, okay. Well, let's go check the gas cap. Let's see what's in here. Yeah, that looks okay. I wonder if they left the cap off. Happening the hood. First things first, I'm gonna go check the purge valve. Okay, so seeing as how I, uh, I have very minimal information at hand other than check engine light on, and uh, what I have over there is a, um, it's a EVAP system, that's the evaporative emission system. Uh, basically what that does is pulls um, uh, gasoline and uh, uh, hydrocarbon vapors out of the fuel tank as the fuel level drops, and it just reburns those to the intake. What it's saying is that system had a large leak, and by large leak it means the criteria for how they classify very small leak, small leak, and then large leak. So the, the trouble code that we just saw, it's saying they have a very large leak, but it's a history code, meaning that the conditions that were present to cause that code to set are now no longer present after a series of drive cycles. So um, I'm gonna need to go back to the well and get some more information from the customer in order to make an accurate determination uh, regarding what to do with this thing. Because they may have left the, uh, the fuel cap off, they may have refilled the tank while the engine was running, uh, so it's it's really hard for me to tell if there's a mechanical fault or a user error at this point. So like I said, I'm gonna have to go back and get some more info. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back under the hood and I'm gonna locate the EVAP system purge solenoid. That's the solenoid that turns on that actually pulls the vacuum from the fuel tank into the intake manifold. I'm gonna disconnect the, uh, the intake hose for the purge solenoid and I'm gonna check the purge solenoid with it disconnected to see if there's engine vacuum present because uh, there could be a leak, a physical leak within that solenoid because it's just a, it's a sealed valve that's commanded on and off to, to flow and to not flow. The, uh, the seal inside of that solenoid can wear out and it can actually start to pull a vacuum when it's being commanded off. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and see if, if that condition is present, if I can feel any kind of a vacuum uh, on, the, on the intake tube side of that solenoid. I know that that thing does indeed have an internal leak and that is uh, primarily gonna be the, the cause of this issue. Um, leaking purge solenoids are very, very common to cause EVAP system leak codes. Um, I, I'm kind of at a 50-50 on it because it is listed as a history code, uh, meaning that conditions are not present. But I've got really nothing else to do until they uh, uh, get a hold of my customer again to get some more details. So in the meantime, that's just what I'm going to do to try to find, find an issue. That way we can move forward with the repair. Um, I do understand that the customer has already replaced the fuel cap. Uh, in, in an attempt to uh, prevent this code from, from occurring. I guess this has been happening for a while and uh, various methods of troubleshooting have been attempted, but uh, I don't think anybody's really gotten into this to, to try to de determine what the cause is. I've already got the engine cover removed and I've located the purge solenoid, which is going to, oh, almost dropped you guys, which is gonna be this little uh, cylindrical shaped valve. Tough to see. Let me get something to point at. Okay, it's gonna be this cylindrical shaped valve right here. This guy uh, potentially has a leak inside of it. 
and I'm going to remove this uh, intake tube right here from it and see if it still has vacuum present. Actually, no, 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 I need to remove the tube on the, on the back side because the front side tube goes to the vacuum source, which is the intake manifold. All right, I need to get some stuff out of the way. Let's, uh, let's pull this PCB hose off, because that's definitely kind of in the way. I can't disassemble this too much because in order to effectively test this, I'm going to have to have the engine running. So I need to be able to get to all the components without disabling the engine, which does make this a little bit more difficult. I'm sure there's another method that somebody may know to do this, but um, uh, like I said, with the, the conditions not present for this leak to be there, I'm just gonna do it the way I'm comfortable with. All right, I got the clamp off. I need a pick to release that hose. Let's move this clamp farther back. Wiggle, wiggle. All right. Oh no, I just tore the hose. That's that's cute. Wonderful. Well, it's definitely got a leak now. No biggie. I'll be able to. I'll be able to change that hose. I'm reaching down now to disconnect the connector. I want to have this uh, this solenoid commanded off at all times. And in order to do that, without using the scan tool, I'll just disconnect it. Yes, that will set a trouble code, but I can just clear those later on. All right, I'm gonna go start this up and then I'm gonna reach in here and feel this uh, this inlet tube to determine if there's any vacuum present. If there's vacuum there, then I know that this solenoid is the cause because it will have a confirmed leak. Starting the engine. No, I don't feel, uh, I don't feel it leaking. speculate that it still could be and, and like I said earlier it's just not leaking right now but uh, the most probable cause based on my experience is going to be an intermittent leaking purge solenoid valve so I'm still I'm still thinking this is our issue here I would just I'd really like to like to prove it before I recommend replacing this part in the meantime I pulled this hose forward some and I'm going to cut off this piece that I tore that way I can reassemble reassemble this without having without having created a leak I'm in the business of fixing things, not breaking them. Okay. Yeah, see that tear right there? That's not, not good. Well, let me just chop that off. I did speak to her again. Yeah. I, know, are you, I don't mean to bother you, video. Um, she said she got gas on Wednesday and the light she noticed on Thursday was on. That's what she said. Okay. Okay. I wonder what I'm gonna do with all that extra details that I got there. Go ahead and squeeze this hose back on. It's almost in position. There it goes. There. Now it's sealed again. I'm, I'm not gonna seat it fully because I may end up taking this back off. 
Okay, I'm back in the car again. I'm, I have not gone up to the service desk yet. I don't know if you guys can read this, but I've, I've entered a uh, technician note into our system here. And uh, this is what I've come up with so far. And uh, this is my official, uh, my official finding uh, based on what they have given me today. Uh, I have stated P0455 EVAP system large leak, history DTC, found conditions not present. Found the EVAP system passes pressure leaking test in service stall. Uh, I've monitored that on, on live data after doing a shutdown event and then watching fuel tank pressures and they, they are holding pressure indicating that a physical leak is not present at this time. Um, da, 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 I have requested additional information from the customer regarding the conditions of the mill turning on. Uh, the customer stated that the light came on after fueling. You guys heard that. Uh, need to rule out if the fuel cap was left loose uh, or if the engine was running during a refueling event. The customer was unable to determine if, uh, if these events took place according to the information provided to me. Uh, assuming that the operator error did not occur and with no current fault present, further accurate diagnostic testing cannot be performed without necessary information. Technician suspects, while assuming that the operator error did not occur, that the EVAP, EVAP purge solenoid intermittently developed an internal leak causing an uncon or uh, uh, I spelled that wrong uncommanded is what I wanted to say uncommanded evap system purge event this conclusion is a hypothesis based on current information provided and is the most probable cause of the diagnostic trouble code technicians suggest replacing evap purge solenoid so that is going to be my official report after evaluating this vehicle. Let's uh, let's relay this to the customer and see what uh, what they would like to do with this. After I spell check my uh, my grammatical errors. Uncommanded. There we go. Look at it. it. Did it all for me. How about that? Technology. Okay. Let's go report this. Okie dokie. The call has gone out and the verdict is in. The owner of this car has made an informed decision to go with the most probable cause of failure and that is going to be this purge solenoid. Uh, they have been made aware uh, based on the, the document that I just, uh, just made that this is a hypothesis and not a diagnostic and they understand my reasoning and based on that they have decided to uh, have me replace this solenoid so I'm going to uh, get this intake plumbing out of the way so I can gain access to that solenoid, unbolt it, get it out of there, and slap the new one in there. There we go. Come out the boost pipe. Let's see, take it off right there too. And don't worry about the pick, everybody. Uh, this is an approved tool for removing removing hoses. That is what these are designed for. They are not sharp and pointy. They're rounded on the end. Yes, I am aware I did just tear a hose with this one, but that was a that was a fluke and doesn't happen all the time. Uh, what I'm doing here is getting behind the hoses and breaking the surface tension between the hose and uh, whatever it's connected to. Okay, there we go. With that aside, now I've got some decent access to the, the purge solenoid, which is this unit right here. Now that I've got decent access, removal should be no sweat. I'll just go ahead and pull the hoses off of it. Remember this side? Uh, this side over here, I've had it barely installed because I suspected we were going to be replacing it, so I'm going to get that hose, that one back off. I will pop the unit off of its bracket if I can come here this hose is getting it caught up so I'll pull this one off too There it is. That's the 
the vacuum side, and that's uh, that's the nipple to the line that runs to the fuel tank, which pulls in the vapor gases. When this thing is commanded on by the ECM, it opens up the valve inside. Using an engine vacuum, it pulls, uh, pulls air from this side of the solenoid through the body of it, and then out of this side, thus connecting to the, uh, the fuel tank and pulling out hydrocarbon vapors. Emissions. Alrighty, I got my new one. There we go, that is, that is the unit. Very similar to the old unit. And it's uh, at this point, it's just gonna be kind of plug and play. So I plug it in and then I plug it in right here. Actually, I'll do the bracket side first. Slide it on there, there we go. Go on. And I can't see, there, there we go, there we go. Needed some more illumination, more lumens. The picture online looks does not look like it, but that don't mean it's not it. So we'll see. I, I said for both. Okay, okay. sounds Before good. Shot, yeah. yeah. Plug this guy in right here. Come on. Man, I'm just not having not having a good time. Can't make anything go to its home. Please connect. I'm gonna be so mad if I find out that this connector doesn't fit properly. No way. Are you serious? It, uh, it should definitely be plugging in, and it's not. Oh, there it goes. That weather pack seal was in the way. Okay, that, that's on. And I'm gonna scooch this hose in a little further. Uh-oh. Did I just poke a hole in it? Oh no, I think I did. Yep, I sure, I sure did. I poked a hole in that hose. Okay, I'm gonna have to replace that hose. Well, damn. I'm supposed to be fixing things, not, not breaking them. Oh well, it's whatever. I'll find a new one. Clamp off, I need that. And I'll get the rest of this old hose off of there. Oh, this just got so much harder now. Why? Why? cool part about having to replace this now is I don't have to worry about getting it off without breaking it. See, there's always a positive. Come here. There it is. Okay, I got a new hose, so I'm going to install the new hose in the place where the old hose just came from. Uh, and then I can put it back together, and then I can clear the codes, and then I can be done with this automobile. And yes, I know that this new one is infinitely longer than the other one. And I will cut it to length shortly. There we 
go. Clamp is clamping. Go back in your home, please. Okay, and I need to cut this right there. extra I'll save that for later because I know I'm gonna need it seeing as how that first clamp was a real bear to move I'm gonna install some lubricant just so I can get this clamp to go on without any grief this replacement hose is slightly larger in its outer diameter than the other one here it comes come on on let's go there we go and clamp oh no it went too far there it is okay Okay, all the plumbing is hooked up and installed. The valve's been replaced, the connector is connecting. I need to uh, get my toys out of here. Oh, there's the missing bolt, forgot that. All good. Turbine GDI. So you know it's good. Okay, starting the engine now. And scan tools coming back online. Now keep in mind, this is gonna have another trouble code stored now since I had the ignition on and that uh, purge solenoid was unplugged. That's gonna leave a uh, probably circuit high or open circuit kind of code, but uh, that will also be cleared when I, when I go to erase all this. Let's just see what it was. Uh, yep, that's it, P0444. Uh, emission, evap emission system purge valve circuit open history code because now it is closed because I plugged it back in of course so now let's clear the codes I'm gonna yep I do want to do that and DTC clear was a success check engine light illumination device is turned off and we're gonna go out for a quick spin around the block just to confirm everything is operating as it should be yeah, that's all good Alrighty folks, I'm gonna go out and take this for a spin around the block, but that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Oh no, I'm really sorry everybody. I lost all of the closing footage that I shot for this video, but that's okay. I'll just use this opportunity to shamelessly plug and promote yesterday's video. If you haven't already seen it, just click the link above or check the description and pinned comments for the links posted there. Then all that's out of the way. The only thing left to do is thank each one of you for watching and to remind you that tomorrow, don't forget, have the greatest day. Goodbye, bluish purple Hyundai.